Hi friends, welcome to Crossroads Community Church discussion topic panel for, the, for today. Uh, I'm Darren Locklear and I'm here with Brother Robert Wicker. We're just a, a couple of blood-bought, born-again children of God, rightly dividing God's Word through the King James Version. We're going to be discussing uh, topics that are relevant uh, to people as a whole, uh, we're going to be, we'll, we will be discussing topics that are relative to Christians as well as the lost world. Uh, today's uh, discussion is going to be uh, on eternal security. And uh, this is an age-old controversy, wouldn't you say, Brother Robert? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and one thing uh, that, that you run into is... Uh, having an understanding of what true salvation is. Many people today, they, uh, they have head knowledge as opposed to heart knowledge. And they fail to get into the Word and understand what it truly takes to be born again. Yeah, that's true, Darren. And before we get into that, there's one thing I'd like to touch on and before we get into the eternal salvation. And that's the misconception people have about when and how they can get saved. And a lot of people think that they... They make up their mind when they're going to get saved, that they'll get up some Sunday morning and go to church. And a lot of them base it on uh, one of the most familiar verses in the Bible, which is John 3, 16, where it says that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that word should is the, is the key word there. It don't necessarily mean that uh, you won't perish. It means you should not. But there's other verses in the Bible, that, and Jesus told us in uh, uh, John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come unto the Father but by me. Amen. And he also said in John 6, 44, that no man can come unto me except the Father which sent me draw me. And a lot of people think that, you know, they can get saved when they want to. And first of all, in John 3, 16, God took the first step towards us by giving us his son for our salvation, Amen. to give his life for our salvation. And then after Jesus told us, you know, how we had to go about it, that God had to deal with our heart, that he was the only way, and then the only way we could come to him was uh, if God drew us. And that's when it's left up to us then. Amen. And not until then. But God is the one that determines when he's going to draw you. And you can go to the church all you want to and, uh, and go to the altar as many times as you want to. And if God's not drawing you, uh, you're not going to get saved because I know I've been there and done that. And you can have a religious experience, and that's what a lot of people have. And a lot of you know a lot of pastors or preachers or whatever that uh, try to lead people to the Lord. They not necessarily purposely, but because of not knowing God's word, not rightly dividing the word of God, they don't study the word. And, and a lot of people walk out like I did when I was a young man and thought I was saved on my way to heaven. Right. And uh, I was just as lost as I could be for a lot of years. There has to be a drawing. It's, it's, uh, it's God's decision when he draws a man. At that time, it's our decision to accept him or reject him. Right. And uh, right now, I'd like to invite our special guest for today, evangelist and pastor David Bobby, to sit down and join us and maybe give us his insight <laughs> and uh, on this topic. Uh, welcome, Brother David. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. I I was headed the other direction. I didn't know I was coming out here tonight. I appreciate you joining us today. <laughs> I might sit close to you because I don't know how that camera's That's set fine. up. That's fine. I don't mind. But anyway, uh, the topic, you couldn't have chosen a, a better topic. Uh, uh, can you turn that thing just a little bit this way? And you, can you still get Robert yeah, in it? I got it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> this is a non-professional uh, meeting that we're doing uh, Anytime you're lifting up the name of Jesus, oh, it's a good, it's a good yes, it thing. Is. And that's what this is all about. I want to throw a, a few scriptures out. And uh, as we're talking about eternal security, they've already covered, you have to be drawn by the Holy Spirit. And uh, when God draws you, you know you're being drawn. Mm -hmm. And all these people that are talking about losing their salvation, uh, they've never truly been born again because... Once you've truly been born again, you have a hunger for the Word of God. You have a desire to study the Word of God. And you know that there's been a change in your life. Amen. And so when they're talking about heart knowledge versus mind knowledge, I had mind knowledge far before I got saved. 
I, I'd been taught from the time I was a little child that Jesus was the Son of God. I taught that he was uh, born by a virgin Mary. His, his mother was a virgin. And that he lived a perfect life, died on the cross, and God raised him from the dead. I was taught all of that, uh, and I believed every word of it, because I knew my mom and daddy wouldn't lie to me about Jesus and God, and I knew the preacher wouldn't lie when I'd hear it. So I believed all of that, and I thought because I believed that everything was okay. But when the Holy Spirit came by and knocked on my heart's door, I learned very quickly that I was on my way to hell, that I didn't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I knew his name, but I didn't have a relationship with him. But once he uh, saved my soul, he knocked on my heart's door and I gave in, then a change came in my life, and, 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 a, and a great change. And I stayed in church and I was listening to the preacher. Brother Darren, I was, I was listening to the preacher every time he was talking, I was listening. I didn't read along in the Bible, and he didn't ask us to read along in the Bible. He just got up there and he preached, and I would listen, and I, he'd preach and I'd listen. Well, I started going to Haiti and, uh, you know, different parts of the country, and I'd go over there and I'd preach because I knew I had good news. I, I knew I'd been saved, and I needed to be telling them how to be saved. And uh, Ignorantly, I was telling them, if you do this, you're going to hell. If you do that, you're going to hell, you know. I was preaching that you could lose your salvation because that's what I was being taught. Uh, but then when God, I came back home after a trip and the Lord visited me in my bedroom that morning and I didn't have my mind on the Lord. It was one of those mornings I got up, took a shower, and I was getting dressed. I had to get down and go to work. And I was putting my pants on over side of the bed and all of a sudden uh, a, a voice spoke to me uh, with great authority and he says, why do you preach that I died in vain? And I fell back on the bed. I just sit back on the bed, pants half on, half off. Debbie was still asleep. And uh, I said, what, Lord? And he began talking to me. Jesus did. And he told me about the blood and told me how powerful it was and the price that he paid on Calvary, that it was a gift from him to me. And once it was applied, nothing could remove it. And he started telling me and he started quoting scriptures and telling me the word that and he said now you go and you study my word and uh, because you're preaching that I died in vain and my blood no man can take you away from me I'm all powerful I have all the power and so uh, after a few minutes and he he left and after I got my composure my breath and everything I went ahead and finished dr dressing and I was shaking like a leaf and I started out the door, and he spoke to me and said, Where are you going? I said, I'm going to work, Lord. Mm -hmm. He said, No, I just told you to go study my word. I've got a work for you to do. And for three years, he kept me in the Bible, studying it, breaking it down chapter by chapter, verse by verse. And he showed me some key scriptures in there that fit in harmony and in unity with everything else in the Bible. And he started giving me, showing me what the meanings were to all the things that I had been hearing all my life from other preachers. And one of the key, of course, there's many key verses in the Bible, but one of the key things that he showed me is over in John chapter 10. Uh, John 10, 20, uh, 27, 28, 29. Of course, you can read all of it, but he says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, Amen. and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, proving that John 6, 44, what you said earlier, Brother Robert, proving that that has to come into effect there, that no man can come unto me except the Father which has sent me draw him. So God the Father has to draw them. The Holy Spirit draws them. Then they come to Jesus. And he says, uh, My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Amen. So when we learn the word of God, we learn never perish. Now, if I could get saved on Wednesday and go out and, and do something on Thursday to lose my salvation, then I could perish. And that would make Christ out a liar. Mm -hmm. I mean, because let me tell you something, when you go to hell, you're perishing. I mean, I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. And, and so that would make him out a liar there <laughs> because he says... Uh, uh, 
they, them, uh, and I given them eternal life, and they shall never perish, never. And I looked up.